Okay, let's get right into it, man. Fighthype.com, Sean to tell here with the unified welterweight champion, the king of the division, or, or the big fish, as Errol likes to put it. Errol, what's up, man? Do you, just to get started, do you enjoy that, being the big fish and having that target on your back? Do you enjoy that? Uh, definitely. I mean, this is what everybody works for, to get in a position where, you know, Everybody wants to fight you, and everybody wants what you have. So, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a great position position to be in instead of just, you know, being the guy that, you know, wants to fight the guy that's on top. So Cause I, some really, people, I like it. Because some people say it's it's easier to be the hunter than the hunted, that that kind of thing. But what do you think, Errol? Oh, no, nah, because I feel like, you know, the, the, the hunter, you know, wants to get something. The one that's hunted, you know, got the prize. So he's the guy that, you know, that that you want you want something from. So, you know, I'd rather be the hunted than the hunter. But, you know, I feel like, you know, being the hunted, you know, I feel like I'm still a hunter too. So, you know, I feel like nobody can just creep up on me and, and take what they want because I'm definitely a guy that's going to, you know, turn around and, and fight back. Now, to, to move on to the big fight, man, April 16th, three belts on the line against your Dennis Ugas. Um, just to jump into it, man, what do you do better as a fighter than your Dennis Ugas? Um, you know, I feel like, you know, I feel like I do, you know, basically everything better. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, you know, jab, you know, come forward, back up, um, you know, just fundamentally – Better sound sound than him. Um, let me see what the defense. Um, you know, basically, <laughs> basically everything. But he's still a good fighter, though. So. There, there's that laid back way of saying something savage, like you do, Errol. The, I'm basically better than him at everything. You know, you. Just, you know, <laughs> um, but what do you think of stylistically in this fight? And, and I know he has his deceptive defense and quickness, but of that he's basically going to be standing in front of you for most of the fight. That's his style. What do you think of that, Errol? Um, I think, you know, it just makes that to be a great fight. Um, you know, I think, you know, if he can hold up to the stuff that I'm throwing in my punches, I think, you know, it's going to be a great fight. He's a guy to just stand there and uh, for most of the time and fight. You know, sometimes he might do a little step back and things like that for the most part. You know, he's right there in the pocket, and uh, he's exchanging punches. So, you know, I think that just makes for a great fight because most of the fights that he's in, you know, they're very entertaining. And I feel like, you know, he's a macho type guy where, you know, if the fight's super good, you know, he'll, you know, get back in there and want to, and wanna, if he get caught with a good shot, he want to get that shot back. Does that ultimately lead to your advantage, though, because you have the heavier hands, him staying in there in the pocket? Uh, we'll definitely see. Um, you know, I'm sure that 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 <clears throat> that his coach have a game plan, and you know, he got stuff that he want to do and things like that. So, you know, I feel like you know, if it's not in the pocket, even if it's outside, you know, I still hold the advantage because I can do that too. So, you know, I'm not going to just focus on one thing that you know that he does because he might you know can switch switch it up or try to switch it up in the fight. You know, you, you talked about his coach, Ismail Salas, and he calls his gym the house of fundamentals. And we, we know you have great fundamentals, Errol, coming from the Olympics. Is that what this fight's going to come down to in large part is who has the better fundamentals? Or will it come down to, like Floyd Mayweather talks about, the special effects, the things beyond uh, the fundamentals? Oh, um, I, I think it's going to come down to, you know, basically everything. I think it's going to come down to, you know, fundamentals, especially in, in the – in the first, you know, start of the fight, even in the in the end of the fight, because when you get tired, you know, do you, you know, drop your hands or when you get tired, do you get lackadaisical or get caught with shots you're not supposed to get caught with? So it's going to be, a, I think, a mixture of everything, special effects and, you know, using your fundamentals and, you know, ability to, to slip punches, avoid punches and, you know, and the counter off punches. And, you know, in that Pacquiao fight, he kept landing that that sweeping right hand. It was his his yeah. southpaw killer. Why why will that not be the southpaw killer against you, Errol? And, and what do you think of that shot? 
Um, I think it's a good shot. Um, you know, it's a lot of a shot that international fighters, you know, throw. And um, you know, I feel like more than South Park, you hit with it, or Josh Fighter, you hit with that with that shot too. But, you know, I really don't, you know, care about that shot. <laughs> You know, you had to do more than that than just land, you know, that shot. So, um, you know, I feel like, you know, Pacquiao always get hit with, you know, shots like that, looping shots like that. So I don't think, you know, that'll play much effect on me. Yeah, and, and how are you always, you know, just thinking about how are you able to get your jab going, always fighting these orthodox fighters? Because usually that lead hand sometimes cancels out. The other, both fighters trying to get the jab going, but you've always been able to impose that heavy southpaw jab against orthodox fighters. Why is that, Errol? Um, you know, it's something that, you know, that I practice on in the gym, something, and you know, I practice on the spawn and things like that. And, you know, I'm used to fighting orthodox fighters because it's something that you know, I've fought my whole life. So, uh, so, you know, if I want to impose my jab and, you know, and practice doing it, you know, like they say, practice makes perfect. So I feel like you do it long enough in the gym and, you know, and practicing, trying to do it, I feel like, you know, you're going to get a better, you know, percent rate on it. So uh, it's something that I steady practice on and uh, that, you know, I didn't craft it and, you know, perfect it pretty well. And did you feel like, I know you mentioned that, Pacquiao, he, it was like when Muhammad Ali lost to Holmes and Sugar Ray Leonard lost to Norris, but did you feel like Pacquiao, he had a little more in the tank when Ugas beat him than those guys did? Um, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I think if he had a little bit more in the tank, you know, he'll, he would have went, you know, all out like he did with Keith Thurman or you know, something like that, because Pac has a guy who, who don't, if he had a lot in the tank, you know, he's going to release it and he's going to, you know, give everything that he got. And I feel like, you know, he wanted to, but he couldn't, you know, get to a point where you get kind of older when, you know, your mind want to do it, but but your body doesn't do it. So, uh, you know, I think he got to that point where, you know, it's a lot of stuff that he wanted to do, but he couldn't do.